Welcome to our lesson about design tables in the assembly environment. Design tables in the assembly environment work the same way as they do in the part environment. You can review our lesson on the part level design tables earlier in this volume of our SOLIDWORKS course. In my graphic area, I've got an assembly that contains three instances of a cube part. Let's begin by right-clicking and opening part A. This cube has three different configurations, A, B, and C. Let's close this part. Now let's apply a couple mates. Select this face and this face. Let's apply a distance mate. 10 millimeters, tap, and let's accept. Let's insert a second mate now, also a distance mate. 10 millimeters as well, tab to register, and accept, and cancel out of the tool. If you're using a lot of mates, it's a good idea to rename them so you can easily identify them later on. Give the mate a slow double click. And let's type in our new text, we'll call it distance 1. This one we'll call distance 2. You can also rename dimensions if you need to. Let's select the mate, double click on the dimension in the graphic area, and let's rename the primary value here. OK. Another way to view dimensions is to right click on annotations and show feature dimensions. Now we're ready to insert a design table. Let's go to Insert, Tables, Design Table. I'm going to select an Auto Create source and OK. At this point, I'm going to choose which dimensions to add to the design table, both of them, and click OK. Let's add two more configurations now. I'll call them 1 and 2. Now let's enter the values. 5 and 5 millimeters for 1, 20 millimeters and 20 millimeters for configuration 2. Click on the graphic area to accept the changes. SOLIDWORKS lets us know that the design table generated two configurations. Let's click OK. Let's go to the Configuration Manager. Here are my two new configurations, 1 and 2. We don't need the default configuration anymore. I'm going to right-click and delete it. Do we really want to delete? Yes. And let's make a few more changes to our design table. Right-click on it and select Edit Table. And let's cancel out of the Add Rows and Columns window. Let's select this cell here. I'm going to double-click on the third instance of the cube. And let's select a column. Here we can specify the state of cube 3, either resolved or suppressed. Notice here that after the name of the component, we see the number 3. This number refers to the third instance of this cube. For example, if I enter 1 here instead, this column is going to control the state of the first instance of the cube rather than the third instance. If I enter the value of 1, 2, this column would control the first and second instances of the cube. I could also enter, for example, the values 1 and 3, and this would enable the column to control the first, third instances of the cube. Instead of a number here, I can enter an asterisk, and that means all instances of the cube in this assembly are going to be controlled by this column. Let's go back to Instance 3 and click in the graphic area to exit the table. Now we've got Cube 3 suppressed in the second configuration and resolved in the first configuration. Let's right click and edit our table again. Cancel out of the Add Rows and Columns window. Let's see how we can control the configuration. Let's highlight this text here and type in a new value. We'll type Configuration. Be sure you don't have a spelling mistake. And then we'll enter Instance 2 and 3. Let's change the name, A and B. Here we'll create Configuration C. 
Let's click in the graphic area to exit the table. The design table generated one additional configuration. Let's click OK. And let's select this configuration, number 3. As you see, the third instance of the cube is still suppressed in both the second and third configurations. Let's right-click and unsuppress the cube. Same thing in configuration 2. And this concludes our lesson about working with assembly-level design tables.